Hey, yo guys, this is Jared, aka The Saint of Sins on Xbox Live, bringing you another edition of MLB Thoughts for Friday, May 18th, 2012. I'm a little more energetic today after getting some much needed rest and a much needed break from jury duty. To begin, a quick apology for not getting up that NBA 2K12 team up gameplay video just yet. I'm still hard at work at laying the commentary tracks down on it, but it has been a bit of a hassle. I'll try and get that up later today, seeing as I have a little more energy and a lot more free time. We'll begin with our typical overview of yesterday's events, where I finished up 7 and 8, managing to get wrong the Twins, the Athletics, the White Sox, the Pirates, the Blue Jays, the Astros, and the Dodgers games. This now brings me to a total of 118 and 119 for the month, and brings my season total to 296 and 279. The big performers out of yesterday would be Brandon Beachy, who went nine innings of shutout ball, surrendering only five hits and fanning six. Aaron Harang throwing seven innings of shutout ball, surrendering four hits and also fanning six. Mitch Moreland would go two for two with two home runs and three RBIs with a walk. While David Wright also went two for two with an RBI, three runs and three walks with a stolen base. His performance yesterday now moves his batting average to 411 on the season. Also having a big day yesterday was Andrew McCutcheon, who went 2 for 4 with 2 home runs. That's enough about yesterday, let's take a look at what we have in store for today as interleague play kicks off. We'll begin at Wrigley, where the Cubs will send up Jeff Samarja to face off against their south side rivals, the Chicago White Sox and Philip Humber. I'm going to be settling on a White Sox victory for Game 1 of this 3 game set. At Cleveland, the Marlins roll into town sending up Carlos Zambrano to face off against Justin Masterson. I'm liking this matchup in favor of the Marlins. The Pirates will roll into Detroit, sending up Charlie Morton to face off against Justin Verlander. Under normal circumstances, I'd be banking on Verlander all the time, but unfortunately, but unfortunately, he's a bit hurt, and I think that's going to impact his performance just a bit. So I'll be banking on Charlie Morton to have a big breakout performance in this game for a Pittsburgh victory. The Cincinnati Reds travel into the Bronx, sending up Bronson Arroyo to face off against the Yankees, Andy Pettit. I'll be looking for the Reds' lefty bats to take advantage of that short porch out in right field to pick up the victory. The Battle of the Beltway will kick off in Washington as Jake Arrieta of the Baltimore Orioles takes on Edwin Jackson. I'll be looking for a strong performance from Arrieta to pick up the first W of the series for the O's. Daniel Bard and Cole Hamels will face off as the Red Sox travel into Philadelphia to kick off this weekend series. I'll be banking on Cole Hamels' lifetime numbers against the Red Sox to pick up the victory for Philadelphia here. At the Rogers Center, after sweeping the Yankees in a two-game series, the Blue Jays will now host the visiting Mets, sending up Ricky Romero to face off against Jonathan Nice. Although I prefer Romero to Nice, I'm going to be rolling with the Mets in this game. Tommy Hansen and James Shields will duel it out in Tampa Bay as the Braves roll in for this weekend series. I'll be expecting a healthy chop block on the race today, leading to a Braves W. In Texas, what will become a staple matchup series throughout next year will see Neftali Feliz and Wandy Rodriguez take to the mound as the Rangers and Astros clash in Houston. I'll be expecting a big strikeout performance by Neftali to pick up the win for the Rangers. In Kansas City, the Diamondbacks will send up Joe Saunders to face off against Luis Mendoza, and I'll be expecting a Diamondbacks victory. Twins and Brewers will clash in Milwaukee as the Twins send up Scott Diamond to face off against the Brewers' Marco Estrada. So far, Diamond has been pitching absolutely perfectly, surrendering no runs in his previous 14 innings pitched. I'll be banking on his strong pitching performance to continue to help lead the Twins to their first victory of this weekend series. Mariners and Rockies in Colorado will see a pitching matchup of Kevin Millwood versus Alex White. I'll be expecting a home team victory for game one of this series. The Angels will travel out to San Diego, sending up Jared Weaver to face off against Jeff Supon. I'll be expecting a big performance out of Pujols in this one as he'll be facing off against a familiar face, concluding in an Angels victory. Cardinals and Dodgers will be playing out in Los Angeles as my pick for last month's National League Starting Pitcher of the Month, Lance Lynn, takes to the mound to face off against Ted Lilly. So far, Lynn has proven to be the best pitcher in the National League, and the Cardinals have been hitting behind him, providing him enough run support to maintain his strong record. And finally, in San Francisco, the Athletics will send up Jarrett Parker to face off against former Athletics pitcher Barry Zito. I'll be rolling against Trend, picking Barry Zito and the Giants to end his lifetime poor performance against his old team. So once again, here are my predictions for the day. 
I'll be rolling with the White Sox, the Marlins, the Pirates, the Reds, the Orioles, the Phillies, the Mets, the Braves, the Rangers, the Diamondbacks, the Twins, the Rockies, the Angels, the Cardinals, and the Giants. We'll begin with a look at the American League hold leaders. There we see a five-way tie between Athletics' Ryan Cook, the Rangers' Alexi Ogando and Mike Adams, Boston's Franklin Morales, and the Tigers' Joaquin Benoit all holding six. Breaking up this tie, we'll begin with who I feel was the weakest of these pitchers, Franklin Morales, who in 10 games pitched eight and a third innings, surrendering four runs on nine hits and three walks while collecting seven strikeouts. This gives him an ERA of 432 with a whip of 144. Toppling him is Joaquin Benoit, who in 10 games pitched nine and a third innings, surrendering five runs, four earned, on 12 hits and nine walks while fanning 16. He also has a blown save against New York and ended the month with an ERA of 386 with a whip of 225. Better than them would be the Oakland Athletics' Ryan Cook, who appeared in eight games but pitched nine innings, surrendering no runs on one hit and five walks while fanning seven. His monthly ERA was zero and his whip .67. Edging him out is Mike Adams, who in 11 games pitched 11 innings, surrendering two runs on nine hits and no walks while K-ing six. He also collected a save in the month and finished out with an ERA of 164 and a whip of .82. And my pick for the number one leader in holds is Alexio Gondo, who in 11 games pitched 10 and two thirds innings, surrendering one run on four hits and no walks while striking out 11, has one save and an ERA of .84 and a whip of .38. The National League shows a different story as there's a six-way tie for the number two position between the Braves' Johnny Venters, the Diamondbacks' David Hernandez, the Dodgers' Kenley Jensen, the Nationals' Tyler Clippard, the Phillies' Chad Qualls, and the Brewers' Francisco Rodriguez. Ranking them from top to bottom, we'll begin with Francisco Rodriguez, who in 13 games pitched 11 in the third, surrendering seven runs on 10 hits and eight walks while fanning nine. He has an 0-2 record with one save and one blown save and has an ERA of 556 with a whip of 1.59. Next up is the Nationals' Clippard, who in 10 games pitched 10 innings, surrendering 6 runs on 11 hits and 6 walks while striking out 12. He has a 1-2 record with one blown save and sits with an ugly ERA of 5.40 with a whip of 170. Up next is Chad Qualls, who in 9 games pitched 8 and a third, surrendering 3 runs on 7 hits and 2 walks, and struck out 5. He has a 1-0 record with 1 blown save, and sits with an ERA of 3.24, with a whip of 1.08. Next up is Hernandez, who in 12 games pitched 11 and a third, surrendering 4 runs on 8 hits and 2 walks, while fanning 17 has an 0-1 record with two blown saves and an ERA of 318 and a whip of .88. Next up is Johnny Venters, who appeared in nine games, pitching in eight and two thirds, surrendering no runs on seven hits and five walks while striking out 17. He has a 2-0 record with no save opportunities with an ERA of zero and a whip of 1.38. Toppling them all is Kenley Johnson, who in 14 appearances pitched 14 and two thirds surrendering four runs on six hits and seven walks, but struck out a fantastic 24. He has a 2-0 record with two saves and one blown, with an ERA of 245 and a whip of 89. But sitting at the number one position is the St. Louis Cardinals' Mitchell Boggs, who in nine appearances pitched 10 and a third, surrendering two runs, one earned, on four hits and one walk, while fanning 10. He has six holds with one blown save, and an ERA of 87 with a whip of 48. Keeping to the National League, we now turn our attention to the saves leaders and see a six-way tie for the number five position between the Milwaukee Brewers' John Axford, the Nationals' Henry Rodriguez, the Reds' Sean Marshall, the Mets' Frank Francisco, the Diamondbacks' J.J. Putz, and the Astros' Brett Myers, who all have five. Toppling them is the Rockies' Rafael Betancourt with six, who has a .90 ERA and a .80 whip. Above him is Javi Guerra with seven saves and a one in three record with two blown, sits with an ERA of 6.10 with a whip of 165. And a first place tie between the Phillies' Jonathan Papelbon and the Braves' Craig Kimbrell sees both of them with eight. 
Breaking down their stats, we see Kimbrough in 9 appearances pitched 9 innings, surrendering 2 runs on 7 hits with 6 walks, but fans 16. He has an ERA of 2 with a whip of 1.44. Pavelbaut on the other hand appeared in 10 games, pitching 10 innings, surrendering 1 run on 6 hits with 3 walks, but struck out 10. He has an ERA and a whip of .9. While on the American side of things, we see a two-way tie for the number four position between the Rangers Joe Nathan and the Mariners Brandon League. Both pitchers sit with six saves, but Brandon League has two blown saves to Joe Nathan's one. And a three-way tie at the number one position sees the Indians Chris Perez, the Orioles Jim Johnson, and the Rays Fernando Rodney, all with seven. Again breaking it down, we see Perez has the weakest numbers, as he has an ERA of four and a whip of 133, surrendering four runs on eight hits and four walks, in 9 innings and 10 game appearances. He has 7 strikeouts and a blown save, while the Orioles Jim Johnson in 9 appearances pitched 8 and 2 thirds, surrendering no runs on 6 hits and 4 walks while fanning 6. His ERA is 0 and his whip is a 1.15. Better than that is Fernando Rodney who in 12 appearances pitched 10 in the third, surrendering 2 runs, 1 earned, on 7 hits and 2 walks while fanning 9. He has a 1-0 record with no blown saves and an ERA and whip of .87. Make sure to leave a comment down below on who you believe is the American League and National League relievers of the month because I'm interested to hear what you guys have to think about this. That's going to do it for this edition of MLB Thoughts. I will see you guys later. Peace.